Hi, I'm Jared Marcel, drummer of Smiley with a Knife. And I'm Alex Marsh, guitarist of Rabbit and Loyola student. And this is Billy O'Connell, who is a professor of music marketing promotion and management at Loyola. Yes, nice to see you guys. All right, we're just going to be interviewing him today. You're going to ask uh, me questions. Yes. Okay. And uh, basically, our company that Jared and I are starting up is called Speak No Evil Management. And we want to get some advice from Billy so that we can figure out how to get it started. So, well, for one thing, I guess we can start. Speak No Evil because it's all about it's non, all non vocal music, right? Non-vocal music. Instrumental, right? non -vocal music, instrumental yes. music. Okay, great. So, I guess the first question we want to ask is basically just what does a management company do for an artist? Uh, you know, what, what should the artist expect from a management company? Well, I think that uh, um, uh, an artist generally begins doing the things that a manager does for them. They do for themselves for a long time, right? You, um, uh, you know, you coordinate your live activities and, and, and work with your booking agent. You coordinate a, um, a fan acquisition strategy, a fan management strategy. You... Um, uh, deal with your finances. It, it's, it's at the time when an artist can no longer do that for themselves. You would hope when they're so busy they can't do it for themselves that a manager becomes involved. Mm -hmm. right? And a manager at that point I think picks up uh, a lot of those duties um, um, basically doing the things that the, the artist can no longer do for themselves because they're so busy at the at, at the business, you know, busy with the work of creating new music, performing their their gigs, they can't. They just they're just too busy to take their eye off the ball any longer. And an artist manager these days is is, is basically in charge of business development, doing that what you know, do, doing that which um, uh, earns you new fans. Um, uh, builds contacts, uh, you know, with the audience, and coordinates business contacts for you know for and on behalf of the artist. Essentially, uh, creates a business strategy, mm -hmm. and then and then tries to keep things on track with that business strategy, with that business plan, and within a business plan, of course, is a marketing plan. Lots more to talk about, but maybe we're yeah. getting ahead of ourselves. So uh, how would you say that the artist should go about finding a manager or vice versa? If you're looking to, to manage artists, how to, how to go about finding those artists? I think seeing as many artists as possible play live is, is the first thing. Um, I think that um, as George Howard, uh, our colleague here at school, says very often, you know, um, you probably have no business managing an artist who will not tour or play live. Because if an artist won't tour or can't tour or doesn't tour, it says something about their readiness to succeed. Perhaps it's that their, their uh, you know, the band member's commitment isn't what it should be. You know, uh, well, I, I can't tour because I can't really leave my girlfriend. Or, well, I still have to hold down my job at the liquor store or whatever. If, 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 if you're not able to tour, if you're not able to play live, and you're not able to kind of establish an audience in real time and in real terms, then it says something about you. So I think first and foremost, you see a lot of bands, and you see who's out there working their butts off. Um, and as an artist, I think the only way you find management is when, they, is when, they, when you, that right person approaches you. They are just so... so um, so attracted to what it is you're doing and to your mission, and so sympathetic to your your vision and your values, that you find you align on on those levels and mm -hmm. begin to work together, you know, in sympathy with one another. So, uh, when an artist, uh, I guess, is a, is approached by a manager or a manager finds that right artist, what what would you say is uh, step one for uh, that relationship to kind of take off? I think that there's a long sort of getting to know one another extended conversation that has to happen. Because first and foremost, you need to know that you, you have sympathetic, similar values. Mm -hmm. That you that what's important to you is also important to that manager. And that the manager can act as a proxy for you um, in, in a way that inspires confidence in you. Right? So 
in, you know, in, you know the, the short version is that the manager cares about the same things you care about. The manager has a similar approach to the, to the approach you would take yourself in dealing with other people. Um, and, that, and that you can then begin to trust the manager. It's a very long process. It's, it's, it's like any other sort of getting to know someone process, dating or otherwise. Mm -hmm. you, know, you don't just jump right in and get married when you meet that, first, you know, you meet that person. There's a slow drip, 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 you know, a long process of, of, of small conversations, of big conversations that start to tell you that this is the right person. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so if, like for my, my band, for instance, Rabbit, we're fairly new, um, not really fully developed yet. Mm -hmm. Do you think it's, um, it would be helpful for us to develop faster if we had a management company such as Speak No Evil working with us, or do you think we should focus on developing ourselves first? Well, your, your situation is fairly unique in that you are the management company, right? Which is, it's, it, you know, it's not a bad idea to do what you're doing. I think, I think it's, a, it's a, I think in fact it's a really good idea that that you're, you're taking the work you're doing for your own band, and kind of doing it for other artists at the same time. You're, you're sort of marshalling resources and creating efficiencies that allow you to help out your friends, you know, and it, and it is sort of a close knit group of people that that all know one another and yeah. and and. And it amounts to a sort of a division of responsibility that I think is, is, is smart and efficient and will probably work out well for you guys because, because you know, you're doing for yourself what you're doing with Smiley with a Knife, what you're doing you know, for other bands. And that is, you know, it's, it's a funny thing. It's, it, I, th I think it's smart to, to take these relationships that you're, that you're able to um, work uh, and establish, and then ex and then extend them, extend that benefit to, to right. the work that you're doing and that other people, other artists are doing. It, it creates a great deal of efficiency. My my generic advice to artists who are just sort of consumed with the idea of getting a manager is, don't worry about it until you are so busy doing the work of a manager that mm -hmm. that you uh, need to offload the responsibility. And you know until there's a there there. There's no real reason to mm -hmm. involve a manager. Um, you need to create some momentum, some revenue, some business before you really need someone else. And, and if you haven't gone through that process of managing yourself, you may never be ready for a manager. Mm -hmm. I think you need to know all the aspects of management before you ever need a manager. All right. Um, so you were talking about um, like you want to just give me that paper? <laughs> no, 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 I'm kidding. You can, you can, you can ask me, but you don't worry about it. You read. Go okay. Um, well, um, you were talking about like, well, what kind of like rev revenue streams could you expect as an instrumental indie artist? That um, you know, it's a very specific type of, type mm -hmm. of music that not everybody is into mm -hmm. yet, at least. So, what type of revenue streams would you think? When it comes to instrumental music, <clears throat> non-vocal music. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think the, the immediate um, avenue or the, the immediate possibilities would be in licensing opportunities, sync opportunities. Right. <clears throat> Especially if you, if you make music that, is, that, that, that could work well as either a music bed or is cinematic in scope and feel or is, you know, once you identify the value proposition of the music, once you determine what the music really brings people that, that other, you know, that, that distinguishes it from other music, there are great, great ways of going about that. I mean, you could um, um, build a profile at um, Pump Music, you know, uh, Pump Audio slash Getty Music now, um, or Rumblefish. Um, you know, a company like Rumblefish lives to take your music and, and offer it as part of a music library of pre-cleared music mm -hmm. that <clears throat> gets in front of an awful lot of music supervisors, uh, music supervisors and editors who are, who are in you know, the post-production phase and need some music and they need to be able to click through and listen to a bunch of stuff and see what might fit. I mean, there are those opportunities that are there right now to you know, unsigned bands, um, bands who don't even have a following you know, that, that could present um, fairly decent revenue streams. Um, 
you know, the other thing is live, playing live and, and being powerful and, and moving live, I think right away brings you to, to a, a state of readiness for revenue generation. You know, um, a band like Mogwai, <clears throat> you know, who, 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 when they play live, it's an event. You know, when they tour, people show up because it's just, it's just powerful and huge. You need to create that, that, that uh, value around what it is you're doing. Mm -hmm. And I think that, that uh, so, so obviously, to answer the question in, in, in the shortest, shortest possible way, I think, you know, live, you're going you're gonna to be able to find revenue uh, through merch sales and, um, and music sales, uh, uh, brand, you know, uh, uh, and, and live, uh, live income. And, and through licensing opportunities, um, especially at you know pre-cleared music libraries. Yeah, the the live <coughs> aspect of instrumental music is really it's somewhat the focus, I guess. Um, well, there's a real community around right. around live instrumental music, at least in New Orleans. It, it, is it similar in other in other cities? It's yeah. in uh, in Birmingham, Alabama. Mm -hmm. There's a very strong uh, community. Right. You know, uh, whenever Smiley with a Knife mm -hmm. goes out there uh, in Lafayette, there's a very strong mm -hmm. community mm -hmm. uh, based around instrumental music. Right. And uh, you know, uh, Providence, Rhode Island has a pretty right. strong scene. Like there's the also scene in Providence, yeah, right. there's also a very strong scene in uh, in the Midwest. Mm -hmm. So I think uh, you know one of the strategies that we have. Uh, going forward is to try to, I guess, accumulate uh, or, you know, grow our, our circle, mm -hmm. uh, our traveling circle to, to go, I guess, more up the, the Mississippi River right. and, and spread out along the, the Gulf Coast as well. Well, I think that a really helpful strategy is establishing contact with other bands mm -hmm. so that you can, you can do gigs and trade, you know. Mm -hmm. When they come down here, you help them organize a tour where you play together. You go up there, they organize a tour where you play together. Knowing bands and being close with bands where you get more gigs from other bands than you do from talent buyers. You right. get, you know, and, and, and bookers, you know. You, you, uh, you network with other bands and there's like a, you know, there's a camaraderie and a, and a, and a, a reciprocation, or a, if that's the right word, I think it is. You know, there's a reciprocal arrangement, let's say, between bands that, that is really, really helpful to, especially to a band who's looking to establish a, a new audience in a in a in a territory you haven't really, mm -hmm. you haven't really worked before. Yeah, I would say um, in New Orleans, instrumental music hasn't really taken off yet. Mm -hmm. um, there's there's plenty of indie bands in New Orleans, which is kind of like instrumental is a little like subsection of indie. Right. And uh, I guess one of our problems has been trying to appeal to the the indie audience mm -hmm. and you know show them that we are here too and mm -hmm. we think you would like our type our type of music right do you have any ideas of, of how we can sort of bring our music to that market i'm surprised that it, that that people aren't already attuned to you guys i mean i mm -hmm. see the names of instrumental bands around town an awful lot right there's there's mm -hmm. uh there's you guys and rabbit and um um, Living Soundtrack yeah. and uh, uh, several others. Right? Another metronome like, in the city is one. Right, right. I think that um, that doing these these instrumental, you know, non-vox nights mm -hmm. is is a really strong thing to do, and to um, and to make sure that that those aren't just a chance for you guys to preach to the converted, you yeah. know, to preach mm -hmm. to the choir, you know, doing something that makes them a little more special. I, I you know. Um, I may not be able to come up with an idea for you right now, but what I but, but the, as a generic idea, what I would say is, is answer the the implied question: Why should I bother? Right? Mm -hmm. What's in it for me? Is what the audience wants to know. Mm -hmm. And I think that if you do something that that involves um, something special with a capital S, you know, then you stand a chance to attract more and more people. At every one of these events, I would I would do something that allows you to, to to repeat the event on a regular basis, like whether it's a residency or a monthly kind of non-vocal music night, you know, instrumental music night. Yeah. Um, do something that allows you to stand in one place and attract an audience, and then you can work that as a as a recurring event. Um, I would I would try to do something that that sets that apart, and I don't mean something like you know a free keg. Right. I mean something that 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 addresses meaning, 
mm -hmm. something that, that allows people to understand why this is worth troubling themselves to go see. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, you got any questions? Um, I, I, I was uh, kind of interested in, uh, I guess, the, the business model that uh, we were talking about earlier, where you were saying that, um, you know, as a, uh, once an artist, I guess, gets a, a feel for being their own manager mm -hmm. for, for long enough, um, um, that, and that and the, the camaraderie thing that you were talking about, mm -hmm. um, uh, do you see it as a viable business model, uh, I suppose, or a, a new sort of business model to just uh, take the, the efficiencies that each band has mm -hmm. and, uh, I guess, channel in what their uh, particular skill set is? And, and I, think, I think on the live end, that's absolutely mm -hmm. true. I think, you know, split seven inches are a great thing to do as well, you know, on the, on the, on the, on the merchandise end or on the, on the recorded music end. Mm -hmm. But I think that if you can if you can tie yourself together with a community of bands, you know, and you and you, you you establish a thread between some kind of line between you and several other communities, you know, there's they're they're bound to be similar, at least sympathetic scenes in 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 many different metro areas, right? You mm -hmm. got to imagine the instrumental scene in Portland, Oregon is pretty cool. Seattle, Olympia, you know. Eugene, Northern California, San Francisco, uh, you know, Santa Barbara, LA, San Diego. I mean, you seem, it seems to me like you could pick a region and, and, and focus on establishing relationships in that region. Mm -hmm. And then I would employ the use of free um, media to its best effect. And that is to say, you know, try to do, uh, try, try to allow people to take your stuff, you know, free of charge, you know, do lossless audio free, but in exchange for an email, mm -hmm. you know, uh, whether it's through Bandcamp or through your own website, you know, let people have the, mu the music for nothing, but get those email addresses. I mean, there's something that we, we didn't address. We're talking about management, but we didn't talk much about the idea of, of establishing uh, a, a permission asset, this, this, this um, market of email addresses, people who, who you, who, who, whose permission you have to sell them something or to at mm -hmm. least address your message to. Um, that's very, very important. And, and, and the prime source of a permission asset is, um, you know, email for content. Some way, you know, you put together an EP and you say, look, free EP, <clears throat> go to this link, put your email in the form, give us your zip code, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know. And um, let that just fill up a database or a spreadsheet, um, and you'll develop a really well. I mean, with a, with an email address and a and a, and a <clears throat> zip code, a postal code, you'll you'll develop a very very highly targeted email mailing list really right. rapidly. And um, if you can advertise that at your gigs, you know maybe you're maybe you you know people aren't going to stop by the clipboard to 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 put it in their email address and postal yeah. code, mm -hmm. but if you have a simple link or a a free postcard that you hand out at gigs, or um, some way of, of 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 letting people know, like there's a lot of stuff online, free, mm -hmm. at this link, um, and you and you just you just you know you hold it back in exchange for an email. I think you 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 really start to develop something that you can also bring as as your particular value with re, you know when you work with another band. You know you say well if you come down to this area, you know. We have a pretty badass mailing list for Houston, for Baton Rouge, for Lafayette, for here, for Birmingham. Mm -hmm. You know, you can offer another band a great deal of value, and um, and, and make better shows happen. Um, something we were talking about earlier was uh, how <coughs> instrumental, like when we say like instrumental music, it's not really people don't really always understand what it is like. Mm. Somebody actually asked me if we were like a jam band one time, and mm -hmm. I was like, "No, we're not a jam band at all. Right. <laughs> That's not our style." But uh, yeah, so how would you suggest either like changing the direction of what we call our music, or um, trying to use you know the fact that we're different to our advantage? Well, it is to your advantage uh, that that there isn't a lot of um, music out there that 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 is um, non-vocal. You know, you know, non-vocal music. It's it, it's still a um, uh, it's still a, a neat uh, you know a niche. You know, um, 
the, you know, I, I don't, I don't know what the, what the, the problem with somebody misunderstanding what you are, is uh, really, um, if if they, if it turns them off to think of you as being a jam band and being instrumental just seems like you're a jam band, then, mm -hmm. yeah, you need to manage that message a little bit. Um, I think that it's important to develop a, a sort of a, a, a brand identity mm -hmm. for what it is you're doing, right? So when you have a, you do a smiley with a knife sticker, you know, is there a public identity, you know, identity that you can voice on that sticker? You know, can you say like, you know, uh, uh, smart music, no vocals, mm -hmm. you know, or yeah. Or edgy music, no vocals, or you know what I mean, just something. I mean, as weird as that is, but but, but there's there's going to be some public articulation of what it is you are that you guys can settle on as a as a as a band, some message that you can get out there that 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 steers people's perception to some extent, mm -hmm. and that that I think is is important. You know, you need to have an internal identity. You know, kind of uh, what it is you're about that all the band members and management understand, and then there's this this public identity that you want to voice in your posters, stickers, ads, you know, whatever, so that, so that when people see Smiley with a Knife, they're also supplied what Smiley with a Knife means. You know, and I think that that's, that's important for an organization, you know, for a, a, a band to do. All right. Anything else? Uh, not that I can think of without Awkwardly reading, reading this the, piece of paper. You can you can read the piece of paper. There, there, this this involves editing, I believe. Oh, this <clears throat> this is true. But in the meantime, you know, I I can, uh, I can, uh, I don't know. I can talk to Alex about uh, 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 about speak no evil. Your your new blog yeah, post. Yeah, you have a new blog yeah, post. New blog post. Yeah, like it. It was all about smiling with a knife this yeah. time because they're playing in a couple shows uh, this weekend out of town. Okay. In Alabama, so. Do you have your next question yet? Um, I, I put on here something about uh, you know, the difference between marketing an instrumental band and marketing a, uh, a singer-songwriter, and mm. if, uh, I guess just to get your general opinion as to how differently or, mm -hmm. um, you know, because there are, there are times where the, the target market can be the same, mm -hmm. but, uh, you know, obviously you want to separate yourself but, um, I'm not sure that there's a difference in marketing when, right. when really the, the entire objective is to establish yourself as, a, as, a, as, a, as an entity that has a human voice mm -hmm. and a unique value. You know, that's what a singer-songwriter will do, too, if they're doing a good job marketing themselves today. They're, they're going to be, they're going to try to um, establish them, themselves as um, as a as a as a value proposition in the minds of prospective mm -hmm. audience members, right? So, your challenge in that case is just to find out where your audience is. Well, first of all, to answer who your audience is. Mm -hmm. Who are they? What 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 else do they do? You know, if they listen to your music, what are they likely to do? Where are they likely to hang out? Whose gigs do they go to? You know, whose gigs might you flyer when you have a new CD or right. when you have an upcoming show? Um, and once you know, who, you know who they are, what they're likely to do, you can address them. And I think it's very important for a band to develop a real, a real voice, because marketing is no longer broadcasting a message. Marketing is 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 now, and will remain, um, uh, a conversation between people. You know, uh, the, the the person, the individual who is there as a as a possible consumer. And and you as a as a person who's creating something, you know, beautiful or moving or powerful or whatever, mm -hmm. um, and and hoping to inspire in them some sense of of um, of its value, something that's going to inspire them to part with their money for it. Mm -hmm.